What's up, Pool Chasers? Thanks for hanging out with us today. I just wanted to go over a few things here before the episode. If you have not checked out the Patreon page, please do so. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Pool Chasers. If the podcast has brought you any value, please take the time to look at it. And if you could donate, we would truly appreciate it. It would definitely help us with production costs, travel costs, event costs, things like that. We really want to bring you guys the best content possible, and we need a little bit of help to do that sometimes. A few things you get when you become a Patreon, you get access to episodes early. You also get access to bonus episodes we release on there and you get to be a part of the patreon wall which is in the studio that's going to come out here shortly soon with all the pictures on it banner you get to spend time with us in the studio at every recording so it's really cool for us to see you guys up there so thank you for the support again that's patreon.com forward slash pool chasers and a lot of you have reached out to us asked us how you could help this is it so please take the time to do so if possible and if you can take a time to rate and review us on apple Podcasts, we want to hear what you think about the podcast so we'd appreciate that and check out the facebook group if you have not yet it is amazing in there. Everybody is sharing so much information and being so positive. We're truly proud of you guys, so we hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, you're here with Jack Johnson from Lake Detection Specialist in Australia, and you're listening to The Pool Chasers. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania, and this is The Pool Chasers Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today on the Pool Chasers podcast. Our mission is to help educate and inspire in the form of a podcast. Today, we have two very special guests with us, Ken Shear and Bruce Wetstein. They are the founders and manufacturers of Pure Water Industries. Pure Water Industries is a custom reverse osmosis trailer built to recycle swimming pool water. These gentlemen are pool owners themselves, and they have also been involved in the pool industry for many years prior. We had the great honor of meeting Bruce at the Western Pool and Spa Show in Long Beach last year, and we ended up talking for almost an hour. This had a huge impact on us because they were so kind to us and showed us how everything worked. This was a great experience for us and we knew right then and there we wanted these guys on the show. So let's dive right into this. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Before we jump into what Pure Water Industries is, can you both share with us your journey that led you both to partnering up to create this company? Well, my name is Ken Shear, um, one of the partners of Pure Water Industries, and uh, I was originally born in New York. I did move to Arizona back in 1979, so have lived in Phoenix the majority of my life. Um, I went to Arizona State University. I actually graduated with a degree in kinesiology and physical therapy, so that was pretty much where I thought I was going to be spending my time, but uh, after I got out of school, I had the opportunity of starting my own business, and I've been an entrepreneur ever since. So always looking for the latest and greatest different things, and um, just been in Arizona ever since. I love it out here, and um, by circumstance, which I'm sure we'll share later in the show, I was able to meet my uh, business partner right now, Bruce. Um, and we'll kind of share a little bit more about how that happened, I'm sure, later in the show. Thank you. Do you have any, um, you got like a family? I do. Um, I uh, got married at two and a half years ago, um, and I have a stepson. He's seven. Uh, we live in central Phoenix. Uh, I met her uh, six years ago. Uh, we became best friends and then got married two and a half years ago. And uh, just a lot of my free time when I'm not working is spent with my family. Um, her family lives close. Uh, my dad is still here. I lost my mom two and a half years ago, but my dad is still here. So I just try to spend as much time as I can with him because he turns 84 this year. And, um, you know, just we like to travel. Uh, we have a pool of ourselves, so we love our backyard. We live in central Phoenix, so we live on a much larger yard where it's fun to be outside and everybody's outside, which is which is kind of nice. So um, I specialize myself in marketing. That's kind of what I do, uh, whether that's a digital age. I really focus in on website design and SEO, and that's what I do a lot for us. Um, but when I'm not working, as long as I'm with my family, I'm a happy guy. Very cool. Thank you. That's cool. I actually – was going to go to school for physical therapy, you know, when I first was out here too. So that's always been a cool passion of mine. I think too, is that was the path I thought I was going to go. I didn't actually go into school doing it, but you know, I was trying to do something around sports. So really thought that was a way that I was going to go and then ended up, we had our first kid and life changed, but <laughs> so, so but that's yeah, the target really market cool. right there is, uh, yeah. <laughs> you you know, physical therapy. It's interesting because that you say that my, I thought, so when I went to Arizona state university, I did my internship and I worked, um, with the sports medicine department hmm. 
And I worked um, football, basketball, and all the other different sports. And I actually was really honestly blessed enough that they picked me to work football the year that Arizona State University went to the Rose Bowl back in 97. Oh, wow. So I knew a lot of those guys, spent a lot of time, traveled with the team. It was a lot of fun. And I, being on the field all the time and getting to experience riding on a bus and just getting on a tarmac in a plane and all the free stuff you got, <laughs> you're like, wow, you know, this would be really cool. And then kind of when you get done with school, it's like, trying to find a job my dream was to work in a pro team those jobs are pretty much locked up so you know i got taken in a different path and i i'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason i'm sitting right here with you guys for a reason and it took me away from that path for a reason so sure it's a tough life though i mean you gotta travel with the team you can't really have a family and it's Mm -mm. all non-stop and that's part of the reason i didn't really continue looking into it as well because i was like well i was already married and i'm like this is not going to (laughs) be something i can do so unless you you know unless you scored the suns or cardinals or something you lived here but other than that still traveling all the time yeah i'm pretty happy where i'm at now so cool sure i'm always curious when anybody talks about being around sports you know college sports professional sports what kind of work ethic did you see from those guys when you were around them it was pretty intense i think that you know we're talking this was back in 96 1996 and 97 so we you didn't have the things you have now you didn't have the technology that we have now. You didn't have the cell phones and the social media. Well, we ha- actually, I'm sorry, we did have cell phones. I think I had a, a air touch, <laughs> a paid, box phone. Yeah, paid like <laughs> fifty bucks a month for seventy five minutes, and, you know. Yeah. But uh, you never turned it on. But um, I think the work ethic was a lot different because you didn't have the distractions that you have now. Like the kids went to school, and then you practice, and everything was very routine. So. The years that I worked football and or basketball, especially football, we had practice every day. So I had priority scheduling of my classes. So all mine were in the morning because I had to be done by 11, 30, 12 o'clock. They were the same guys. So everything is very, very organized and structured. So they had certain times they were in school. Then they had certain times where they had um, like study stuff. Um, and then it was practice. And then it was this. so everything was very organized. And because you don't have Facebook and all the other stuff that you have now that I think is what has taken everybody away from what they need to focus in on the time. I think the worth that ethic was pretty intense back then. Um, th- that time of year too, I mean, ASU had a great team. So everybody was really focused. We were ranked, I think number four in the country at that point. So we had a great team. We'll play in the Rose bowl. So it was pretty focused in on what that end goal was. And everybody was really on board with the mission and things like that. I think that, that's changed a lot now. Who was on that team? Uh, Pat Tillman. Tillman. Yeah, Jake Plummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the other guys that have played. Derek Rogers, some of the other major guys that played in the NFL. Pat Tillman was probably the best. It's crazy. It, short story on that. He was the greatest, one of the greatest guys. I know mean, everybody knows who he is, and you know he sacrificed his life for you know our freedom and stuff like that. I had a pitcher with him on the fifty yard line of the Rose Bowl before the day before the game. Just me and him. And I can't find the picture anywhere. Really? Yeah. Oh, total bummer. Oh, but the coolest guy didn't matter if you were a guy or a girl. Everybody was, hey, dude, what's up? He knew your name, but like one of the most down to earth, coolest guys ever. So, very cool. So, what led you to choose that major in college? Was there something that happened, you know, in your earlier years, maybe in high school or something that made you want to choose physical therapy? Um, I think it was more just along the lines of sports. Actually, my dream growing up was to work in the fire department. And actually, I did volunteer with Phoenix Fire for um, five years. I thought I was going to get hired. My body, I have a herniated disc in my back, so my body kind of thought differently. Um, <clears throat> and really, honestly, it's just one of those things where it was I was really into sports. I thought sports was the coolest thing ever. Just being on the sidelines, you know, I'm not athletically talented myself. But I just thought that, you know, this would be the best possible way. I was really into science and the body and you know, I studied kinesiology, which is, they call it the study of motion. So I was just really interested in the bones, the muscles, how everything works together. And that's kind of what brought me down in that path. Nice. Um, but is there anything maybe from your childhood or anything that kind of impacted you that you want to share? Honestly, my parents instilled to me of, of hard work ethic, you know, have fun in life, but work hard for the things that you want. And I think that that's what's always motivated me now that I've 
like I said, when I graduated from school, I had the opportunity to open up a business. I knew nothing about marketing, opening a business, whatever. I was 22 years old. I was like, well, this looks cool. Why not? And I really taught myself out in the real world. And in the last 20 years, I've owned four different businesses. I've sold a few. Um, I've learned a lot. I kind of feel that anything that I'm doing in the real world today, as far as marketing and how to start a business, I wouldn't have learned in school. And I'm not saying to not go to school, but it's just 20 years ago, they didn't have the type of technology they have now. And I feel like I taught myself out in the real world. So I think that the focus that my parents instilled in me has kind of just focused in on like, what am I doing now? And how can I be the best at what I'm doing now? And I'm always intrigued by new things and exciting things. And I know we'll talk a little bit how I got into this industry because I you know, I had a pool growing up, but I didn't really, I just jumped into it in 2005 when we started, when I started a business out here in the pool industry. And I'm always intrigued by new things. You know, what's that latest and greatest thing, or what's that new invention that could be really cool. And I think when we talk about more of what we're doing with our company, that'll come a little bit more clear. But um, I've been very blessed to just have great parents that instilled that energy in me to just stay focused, do what it is you want to do, have fun at what you're doing. Um, and as long as you're happy, we're happy for you. Very good. I think, um, you know, going to college, you know, even if uh, maybe you think that you need to do stuff in the real world in order to be the best at it, I think the discipline you get out of being in college and having to be at classes at a certain time and having it in the back of your mind that you could actually quit anytime you wanted to. It's not like when you're in school and you're 15 years old and your parents are like, no, you have to go to school. You know what I mean? But now you have a choice and just having that, that discipline, just like being in the military, just like being in the military or something, it's that discipline and that structure that you get. Even if you just do four years, you know, when you get out of there, you know that you got to wake up at a certain time and make your bed and show up places on time. And it just gives you that, you know, that hard work ethic. I definitely agree with that. I think college is huge for that. I'm sure I can't, remember there's a lot of times I used to say to my parents why do I need social psychology <laughs> like why do I need physics like this isn't going to help me calculus why but I think just what you talked about that worth ethic and that structure and just being disciplined to do the things that you need to do really comes full circle in real life because I think that I like I said I jumped into starting businesses when I was out of college and you need a lot of focus. You know, it's fun to own your own business. It's nice to be able to kind of make your own hours and have your own schedule if you need to take some time off or do this or do that. But you also have to be very focused because, you know, that could, you know, it's easy to take advantage of that too. So but I think we all do a lot of things that at one point in our lives, we reflect on stuff that we didn't think that we would need. And we're like, man, I wish I would have paid more attention to that because I really could have used that now. Cause there's a ton of things that I wish I would have been much better in high school with, especially like English, like now as an adult I'm reading like English books, cause I actually love writing and reading and things like that. It's like a lot of this would have been so much easier if I'd have paid so much closer <laughs> attention, you know what I mean? Um, yep. but you live and learn. Um, but thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Hey guys, we're interviewing a few of jobbers customers today to let you hear their testimonials. So, all right. Can you just tell me your name, your business name, you know, kind of what you guys do? Sure. Uh, my name is Hal Dinbar with Patriot Pool and Spa in Austin, Texas. Uh, we are a, a service company that about 60% of our business is weekly pool cleaning and the rest is equipment installation and repair. Have you seen your business grow since using jobber? Uh, yeah. So when we started using Jobber, there were three of us, including me. Um, we now have a team of uh, 35 and growing. Um, and so over the last four years, you know, once once we started putting systems in place with Jobber being one of them, uh, it's really just made it made it easier to scale and facilitated that growth. Well, there you go. We could not have said it better ourselves. So if you guys want to check out a software solution for your business, please go to getjobber.com forward slash pool chasers. That's getjobber.com forward slash pool chasers. If you go to that website, you can get a 14 day free trial as well as 20% off your first six months. So it's a great deal. Check it out. So let's jump into to your story, Bruce. Well, I was just a born and raised San Diego kid and I, I enjoyed sports as well growing up. Um, I played basketball, I played football, I played baseball. I went to a very small school, so I was able to play a lot. I wasn't a natural talent, but I liked to play, so I worked hard at it. Um, played one season of football in high school and 
and then got into golf, and I, which I had been playing since I was 10. And I played that, uh, I guess, pretty much exclusively. So grew up with a uh, mom and dad that stayed married till my dad passed um, in 95. I got two brothers and two sisters. Uh, pretty much uh, all of us are involved in the construction industry. So uh, I had dreams, and, and in high school I took my college prep classes, but um, never really got into – I never went to college. I thought I'd be an attorney. I thought I'd be a doctor. Uh, I, I still think those are cool professions, but they're not for me. And just like you said, you'd learn some things, right? Sure. And I'm, I'm so thankful I didn't go down that path. But I took a uh, – uh, an easy route into construction because it was good money early on and stayed with that and then kind of looked around and ultimately I guess in about um, 95 I think it was I got into the pool business I was asked to work as a superintendent for a company in, in Escondido in San Diego County and I enjoyed it and I did that for five years and then I started designing and selling um, and just evolved into where we are today very cool so let's go back a little bit. Um, you know, we had, you know, prior discussion, you were saying that your dad had a, a water bottling company. I thought that was really cool because you were saying how you just grew up around quality water. Can you share with us a little bit more about that? There was a, there was a, dad was always a business guy and that was one of the businesses he had. And it's kind of ironic because that was before bottled water was what it is today. I mean, nobody drinks tap water today, right? I mean, in fact, we're sitting here with bottles of water around us. <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of a, he was kind of a, a pioneer, I guess, in that industry. It was a small company out of San Diego. Actually, we were out of San Diego. It was out of uh, Orange County, if I remember correctly. It's called Silver Springs. And uh, dad got into that very early and he, he built his route in Escondido and he saw that he could branch out and he would build routes farther out. Uh, and then he would sell those off to other guys. And uh, kind of fast forward, Beatrice Foods uh, bought us out. Uh, at that time, uh, my dad and one of my brothers and myself were doing it. And we didn't like the way that uh, Beatrice ran it, so we got out. And then dad moved on into um, National Car Rental and Rider Truck. But anyway, I was always around quality drinking water. I mean, I, I, I kind of sometimes jokingly say I never drank uh, anything other than bottled water growing up and I'll be 60 this year. So that, this goes back kind of a ways. Um, but just like every kid, we drank water out of the hose after we were playing football in the front yard. That's what I do. Whatever was around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I do appreciate. And to this day, I, I'm hesitant to drink out of the hose, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not a purist. I think that people more scare me than anything. <laughs> it could be good for all I know. I'm just like, I don't know. There's a lot of talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> this water coming from the tap. <laughs> um, was it? Was there a lot of discussion about how, you know, just drinking the bottled water was better? You know, was it was it clear to you? Was he always like, hey, you, you know, drinking, you know, purified water is the way to go because of this? Or was it just, you know, kind of a business? I, I think it was a combination of both. I mean, you know, obviously, I, well, you know, dad taught me a lot of uh, about truth and integrity. So... I do believe that he felt it was a better quality product type of thing, but you got to admit there's some business attached to it as well. Definitely. But back in the day, and I don't even know if it's true anymore, I still get a form of water delivered to me, but it's not bottled. Um, but back when we had the companies, you could have either a spring water, a distilled water, or a fluoridated water. And, you know, the fluoride, the fluoride, the fluoridated water was more designed to protect your teeth. Um, People bought distilled water to put in their irons and stuff like that, and other people just felt like the spring water was the way to go. So there was options, and yeah, you know, it was just another, it, just like anything. There's a good, better, best. You, you, you're paying for tap water, but here's a better quality product. If you're interested in it, let's let's set you up. Sure. Spring water is gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't you didn't work for Arrowhead, did you? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Arrowhead. Water. I don't know. Maybe that's the way the water's supposed to taste. <laughs> I think that's Arrow, the case. I'm I still believe. Bad for me. I still believe this day Arrowhead gives me headaches. I mean, every time I drink that water, I'm like, I get a headache. I don't understand. It Maybe a it's a psychological sh- thing, but I mean, I every think time you I get drink so Arrowhead, worked up because it tastes so bad. It's gotta be like so cold. Remember when we were out in the field cleaning pools and someone brings us like Arrowhead water? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you, but that's going in the cooler or in the trash. I think I'll just drink the pool water. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink something else. Unless it's like ice, ice cold. Otherwise, it's like, ugh. That's gross. funny. Water snob. Yeah, yeah water right? snob. Uh, do you have any Evian? <laughs> <laughs> so to fast forward a little bit, I know we went back and forth about how you go like dirt biking with your sons and stuff like that. And you could just tell that that connection you have with your family is extremely important. Um can you talk a little bit about the relationship that, you know, you maybe had with your boys and, you know, the relationship that you have now? Because I think that's really cool that that was, you know, just always in your crosshairs. Like, you know what? Family first. Got to take care of my family because before you know it, you know, they're going to be gone and have their own families. So maybe you could, you know, talk to us about that. It's cool. It's kind of a, a, a I guess maybe a cool story. I, growing up, I never wanted kids. So when I found out I was going to have a, a child, I just embraced that. That was kind of cool. And so time, time passed, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on whose perspective, um, his mother and I did not we, – we didn't make it. So we divorced at, when he was eight years old. And I, I wanted him on the weekends because I knew I had more free time, and, and the pool industry was nuts at that time. And so – um, that kind of made sense to me. But then I also knew I couldn't go a full week without seeing him. So I'd pick him up on Wednesday nights as well. And kind of a funny story, we got into going to Del Taco on Wednesday nights um, for dinner. And that he was eight at the time, I think I said. And he's 26 now, and we still meet Wednesday nights at Del Taco. That's crazy. So, awesome. Yeah. Same yeah. prices? Uh, no. Your grandfather did those <laughs> prices? <laughs> I should have the best the customer. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been coming here forever. <laughs> yeah. You got a punch card? <laughs> should name a taco after you guys. <laughs> but I, I also got him in a dirt bike in early on because, you know what, I, 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 I kind of felt like there's a time to be dad and there's a time to be a buddy. And the the dirt biking thing took the, the dad part away and put just two guys in the dirt, which yeah. to me was really cool. And I didn't get to do that with my dad. So I'd been riding. My parents would never let me have a bike. So when I turned 18, it's the first thing I did is went and bought a bike and been riding <laughs> them ever since. So I, I wanted to – because that's kind of late to start, it's you late. know. So I wanted to start him early. And, and to this day, I'm, I mean, it's – it's it's a dangerous sport. It's a really fun sport. Um, he's a good rider. I enjoy riding with him. He enjoys riding with me. It's just two guys in the dirt, and it's just it's just a huge. I'm just so thankful for that part. You know, it's just something that kind of really kept us together instead of the potential of us growing apart just because. Well, I'm my own guy now, Dad, and he is his own guy for yeah. what he needs to do. But that's cool. So, what do you do now? Now that the you know kids are all grown up, what are you doing after work? After work, when does that stop? Take a nap. (laughs) (laughs) No naps. No naps. I can't nap. No, I'm type A. I'm just too driven. I I do. Besides our our reverse osmosis, I'm pretty involved in our industry. So there's a lot. There's there's always plenty to do. And then um, I am remarried, and and my wife and I like to travel. And we just got back from Sedona last week. I took her there for a birthday, and uh, we were in Montana for for Thanksgiving. Um, We just like to. We're not fancy people. But we like to get out and see some of the country. I'm going to try and not talk about Sedona and insane uh. amount because I, <laughs> I just love Sedona so much. We've, since we've been here, been there like three or four times. But what's your favorite thing about Sedona? I just think it's uh, – you know what cracks me up is to, to do, go try to find a healing vortex. We've hiked to probably more than half of them. I don't think they exist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're fun. It's just a, it's just a cool vibe town. Yeah. It's just – it's kicked back. Um, there's good energy there. There's sure. totally good energy there. And it's just, it's peaceful. It's, it's like you can just relax. Did you go off-roading there at all yet? Have you done the four-wheelers? We did that like just recently. Oh, did you? Yeah, in October with our team. It was, it was really fun. Yeah. I never did. had done that before. I've been to Sedona plenty of times, but like actually going out into the hills with the red dirt. and It was like the coolest yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They hit all the puddles. <laughs> Me, Greg, and Kyle kind of avoided the puddles. but they Even were when all you told them not to. Yeah. <laughs> They were all in getting to getting soaked, but no, it was cool. Uh, different, different type of seeing Sedona that way. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of options to do there, from mm-hmm. the Jeep tours to to even mountain biking, or even if you're on a on a you know a quad or a one of the, a razor or something. Mm-hmm. I just like two wheels. There's just more freedom in two wheels. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. and I have not done that there. Yeah, but I have done the Jeep tours. That's cool. So, 
But it's so important to get away and unwind a little bit because I feel like when you come back home, you feel like that sense of, okay, and get back to work, you know, like when you're in Sedona or any other place that you travel to, it's just nice to, you know, detach from work a little bit. We all need that sometimes. Oh, it's very true. But as you know, you got your phone or you got your laptop or you got your, you're not fully disconnected. But I agree with you. You you have to make that time to get away. You Even if it's 50%, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think we've ever completely <laughs> unplugged. It's almost impossible, you know. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. And you know why? It's because we like what we do. We're very lucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's very true. And yeah. Brett was telling us when he goes and like turns his, his phone into airplane mode, and we were like, airplane mode? What is that? <sighs> Like that's that's a that's a pretty big disconnect right there. You just turn it all off, but <laughs> well, I'd be turning that thing on and off so many times. Right. Just I just want to say, I just want I just want to see what time it is. <laughs> you don't you don't need to turn it back on for that. No, just I do this phone special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, pool chasers! We hope you're enjoying this episode so far. We'll jump right back into it in a minute. We are very proud to announce that Jandy has come on as a supporter of the podcast. Their dedication to the businesses that make up our industry align very well with our vision here at Pool Chasers, and we are super excited to have their support. With their recent quitting the internet policy, which went into effect January 1st, they're taking a firm stance to support our industry. They have pulled over 400 SKUs offline, and as of January 1, no manufacturer's warranty will be provided if the product is purchased online. They've even put a team in place which monitors the web 24-7 to help ensure that the details of the policy are being followed. We think this policy is a great step forward for industry and are so glad that a company has taken a stand for service guys and gals out there. So if you haven't heard episode 31 yet, please go listen to it to find out more information or go to jandy.com forward slash built strong. That's jandy.com forward slash built strong. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your story with us a little bit. Can you tell us how you both met and the story behind building pure water industries? So initially what started was, like I said, I had been building pools with a company out of San Diego County since 1995, and, and I had had a, a pool of my own, and, and salt systems were kind of starting to really uh, take off. And they were new, and we didn't really know a whole lot about them. And I, I could see the calcification, and I could see the, the lack of chlorine production uh, when my water got hard. So just as kind of a, a rule of thumb, every other year I would, I would drain my swimming pool. And it just seemed stupid to me. It seemed like there's got to be a better way. Why do I have all this water going down the drain? Why, why are we screwing it up? What, what's the problem here? So I end up you know, hearing about this company in Arizona, and they're, they're playing with different ways to remove solids, and, and RO is a big part of it. And so a road trip ensues, and we come on over and talk to these guys and and try to get an idea of, of what's going on and how it works. And we were pumped. I mean, we were stoked. And uh, to the point, and they were pretty they, they were per, pretty early on into this thing at that point. So we thought we were going to purchase one of their trailers they were trying to sell, and it just it just didn't work out the way it was set up. And so... And those guys were out here in Phoenix, right? Uh, they were, I, I believe it was Phoenix. Ken, was what was here. it? Phoenix? Yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. So... Um, you know, and it, it was it 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 really piqued my interest because it was kind of it was new and it was it just it just it struck a chord with me for some reason. So anyway, going back to my uh, drinking water history, uh, after we figured out we couldn't work with these guys, it, and it wasn't really their fault. It was more to do with with uh, a, a company from Arizona crossing the border of California. Um, I went and started tracking down some of my industry contacts and thought, let's just. You know, I've been a construction guy for a long time. I can build stuff. Uh, all I got to do is find the guy that can figure this thing out, and I know who that guy is, so I'm going to go talk to him. And he didn't really want to talk to me. Uh, it took me six tries to, to really get through to him. Uh, because, Persistent. Yeah, well, <laughs> grab his leg and don't let go. <laughs> he, um, he would always tell me, he'd say, hey, Bruce, he goes, you know, RO takes body of water A and it makes body of water B, and it does a fantastic job of doing that. And that's not what you guys are doing. You guys are taking body of water A and putting it right back into body of water A. And every time you pull on a new job, it's a different scenario. And, and RO just doesn't like that. And RO hates chlorine. It's one of its, you know, it's, it's kryptonite to them, uh, to those membranes. So it, it, took a, it took a process to figure out how to make this all happen. 
but it just seemed like the right thing to be doing. Sure. And I think there was something you were saying about like a batch process or something that seemed to be the most difficult, you know, part of this. That's what the RO guys call it. They they call every different body of water another batch. So we became lumped into that batch process. Whereas if I'm on your pool today and, and another pool tomorrow and another pool the next day, these are separate batches and the system doesn't know what to do with that mm-hmm. because it was used to taking this quality or lack of quality water and creating what you were trying to have as an end product. And the swimming pools, as you know, would just go from, they could go from bad to worse and diff- always something different. Sometimes I'm chasing calcium. I mean, and all this I didn't know early on and, and it's evolved as we've evolved, but uh, sometimes we've got, we've got some of our service providers, they're not worried about calcium. There is no calcium in their water, but they got cyanuric that's crazy high. Right. So they're removing that. And and again, that's where you got to tell the system what it needs to do and and set those parameters. Okay, so at this point in time, you're at the point where you're starting to kind of get everything figured out to some degree. You know, you're making big moves. You got the RO partner; he's the older gentleman that says you can't really do it, but you know, you guys are working together to make it happen. Um, meanwhile, Ken, you uh, pretty much got into the industry. What we say about 2005? Yeah, 2005. I friend of mine came to me with this idea and we talked about earlier i'm always into new ideas and potential new businesses and he kind of made me aware of a problem that we were having here in arizona so we started a company here um in 2006 so his problem was um he was dealing with high levels of calcium in a swimming pool which as we all know here in phoenix and in arizona we have high levels of hardness and it was in june and his hardness was so high they needed to drain his pool, but he has a plaster pool, so you can't do it in June. Mm-hmm. So he was he came to me and said, I, I know, you know, because he's a chemist. He's like, I know of this great way we can remove calcium from the water without draining the pool. And I was like, okay, well, what's so cool about that? He goes, well, you know, there's half a million pools here, and I'm not the only one that has a problem. So, of course, the light bulb went on for me of, ooh, well, this could be kind of cool. A lot of research and development went into this thing. We started a business in 2006. The business was here in Phoenix called Calsaway. Um, and uh, we got in friends and family investment money, started the business. Uh, and in about 2007, we launched a large PR campaign that blew our minds about how well it went. We were featured on every local news station here in Phoenix. We actually were featured on NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Like, I mean, we kind of hit the bonanza of PR and it blew us up and we didn't even do our first pool <laughs> with, <laughs> with this semi-truck system that would come to the pool and, you know, dump a bunch of chemicals into the pool. It, I was going to say, what was it exactly? So... It's come such a long way. I, it gives me nightmares to think about how this started <laughs> out. Um, so we had a huge truck. I, I mean, just with a f- large filter press on it. And I wish I had a photo of it. I know you could probably pull it up online. Some of our old photos you could still pull up online to see what this thing looked like. Um, but y- the truck was more fun to drive than actually doing what we had to do when we got to a pool. We would put all these different chemicals in the pool to raise the pH super high. It was a lime lime softening process. So it actually would drop the calcium out of the water and it would go to the bottom of the pool and we would actually vacuum it out through this ginormous filter press on the back of this truck. And eventually it would fill up. You'd have to open up the press, drop all the calcium out, and literally you'd leave the water with like 100 parts per million calcium. Um, The pool water was silky smooth but the residual of this process was salt. So TDS went through the roof on the pool. And because Leslie's owns the market pretty much on where everybody gets their water tested, um, we ran into a major problem when we first started the process of we had hundreds of pools that wanted us to come out. Because it's, it's really funny. Like everybody has this problem. You come up with a solution and everybody needs you there tomorrow, but it's like, what'd you do before us? Right. Um, we had hundreds of pools to do and we started running into a lot of backlash because the ha- the hardness was low, but people would take their water sample into a pool store to make sure that what we did was what we were supposed to do. 
and it would ping those meters. Mm -hmm. So Leslie's would be like, you still got to drain your pool. And it, it, a lot of nightmares ensued on this process. Um, and even though we knew what we were doing was the right thing and we, we kept doing pools, but then we knew we had to do something different. And in 08, um, we started doing reverse osmosis. So we actually built our first trailer in 08 and started doing RO on swimming pools. And that RO instilled doing new pools as well as going to a lot of the pools that we saltified, I guess is the best way to do it. <laughs> um, and cleaning those up because the cool thing with reverse osmosis is it lowers calcium hardness, totals off solid salts, phosphates, waterborne diseases, different things like that. So we had a good thing going. And in 08, the housing market was amazing um, in the beginning part of it. And things were going really well. But what ensued with the PR of our company was a lot of people that were very intrigued by it. And we got a lot of interest in, are you guys going to franchise? What is it that you're going to do? Um, and we were still new and we were still in research and development, R&D on this thing. It wasn't, you know, we were first on scene doing this thing. And it was like, where do we go now? What do we do? And so we started talking to some franchise attorneys and there's just a lot of stuff that goes on with that. And when you're still trying to build out a company and try to perfect a product, there's a lot that needs to be done before that. But we had people calling us wanting to know when we were going to do this. Um, and that comes full circle to really when I met Bruce. Bruce was one of the people that called us, said they really wanted to come out and see what we were doing. And we were kind of hesitant in the beginning because, again, we just really rolled out the new RO system and how that was going. And we just started cleaning up some pools and getting that everything moving again. But we were like, all right, well, why not? You know, what do we have to lose? Have somebody come out here? Well, they'll see. So he came out, spent probably a majority of the day with them. They actually came out to a, I remember it was a Camden property that day. We were actually doing a, an RO job on a Camden property in the West Valley here in Phoenix. We were ROing one of their swimming pools. They came out, we talked for several hours. Uh, they got back on the road or uh, to San Diego and talks ensued. But as Bruce talked about a little while ago, uh, franchising is complicated as an, enough as it is trying to franchise in California and or outside of California with California franchising laws is becoming is is quite challenging. So we got as far as our attorney was talking to their attorney, but it, it just it never went anywhere. It, it just we weren't set up the way that it needed to be. And again, we were two years into this thing and still in R&D. So um, in full disclosure, they went ahead and started their own thing. And my business partners at the time had a problem with that. I didn't. Um, I, I'm a big believer and everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, look, we can't really work with them anyway. We can't, but we can't stop them from doing it whatever it is they want to do. So, um, that kind of cycled down to what happened with Calsaway here. In the end of 08, the housing market crashed. Our business took a, a complete dump, I guess is the yeah. best word to use. Yeah. Um, and the one thing was, is we built these two semi trucks to get this thing started. Um, and those trucks were $150,000 a piece to build. Wow. So we had two of those and then we built this RO trailer. So a lot of money went into this 150 thing to just build. Yeah. And I always tell people that just because you're first on scene doesn't mean that it's always the best. We ran into some issues. We got it right later on, but, you know, we were so far in the negative with just trying to get rid of those things, and we weren't able to use them anymore. And then we built this trailer, and then the housing market crashed where, you know, people stopped spending money on their homes, and they just started draining their pools, and the company folded. Uh, in 2009, I knew it was heading that direction. In 2010, we dissolved the company, and uh, honestly, and immediately Bruce contacted me. They found out we you know, got rid of the company and he's like, why don't you come work with us? And I remember telling him at that point, I'm like, you know, I got friends and family involved in this. It's a pretty tough pill to swallow because some of my friends and family lost money on this. You know, I don't know if I really want to get back into this. And, you know, Bruce was like, you know, I totally understand, but you know, maybe just keep that door open and see what happens. And then if memory serves me right, about seven months went by and 
he contacted me again and he's like, why don't you just come out here and let's chat? So he flew me out to San Diego. We, I spent a couple of days out there and he's like, you know, things are kind of going well here and we'd really like to have you a part of the company. And he made me part, you know, a percentage owner of their company. And I really couldn't turn it down because I really had passion for what it is that we were trying to do back in 05. Like, I thought the water conservation aspect was really cool. I thought the way the systems work was really cool. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. But I remembered what my parents always told me is if it's something you want to do and it's something you're passionate about it, go for it. Bruce and I have a very similar mindset when it comes to business ethics, when it comes to things that we want to do. And um I couldn't turn it down. So in 2011, I joined his forces. So for the last eight years, he and I have been working together. It's my longest partnership that's ever lasted. And I, I think it's just that, you know, he and I have that similar work ethic and that excitement for it. And I think that that's what makes it successful. But that's kind of really how we met. It's an interesting story about how it all occurred. Thank you so much. That's a really cool story. And we didn't realize it until today, but we have a similar story and we know that it's not easy for most people to kind of acquire a partner um, and have sort of a, a successful relationship. What, what exactly did you, you know, and I know you just talked about it, but what did you see in him that was like an immediate indicator that that was somebody that you wanted to work with and uh, you just knew that it'd be a, a good relationship? Well, it, it, for good or bad or right or wrong, initially we thought that we really needed a Facebook presence. And that was something that w I, I, there was no control over. I, I, I don't know how to do that. That's not me. I'm the builder guy. So Ken had some social media skills that, that we felt were very important. And he had already proved it over there. He had gotten – I mean he would gotten national exposure. He was primetime TV. Right. So – and we were a startup and we didn't have a lot of money. Um, and the partnership offer was kind of something to kind of entice him to come over and help us out, which has helped immensely. I mean, all of the SEO and all of what you see about our company is what Ken's doing. So it was a good move. Uh, we learned that we're not really a Facebook company. You know, we don't have, you know, free tacos today at this location. Come and see us and like us and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Wait a minute. You said before yeah, this what's up with that? that there was free tacos. <laughs> yeah, you promised free tacos, man. <laughs> okay, after, we, after we're done. <laughs> but, I mean, what, you know, what sort of advice would you give to people that are maybe looking for a partner? Because it is really important. I mean, there's... Man, if you can find a good partner, it's so important to have somebody that you can just bounce ideas off of. And, you know, there's days when, you know, maybe Ty's not having such a good day and you can come to me and vice versa. And it just all of that really helps to just have somebody there instead of having to take on every aspect of the business all by yourself. Because when Ty first started Brothers Pool Service, I mean, he had to do everything. It was like, you are the website guy. You are the guy that has to try and find how to, you know, repair motors and pumps and how to do filter cleans. And you're having to do all that. And there's really, there's only so far you can go because you have to be really good for some years before you can afford to get on a, a PR person or a marketing person or a, you know, somebody to do the books. So it's, it's pretty difficult. Is there any, any advice, you know, is there any certain, you know, quality traits in somebody that you'd be looking for? I'll Good intuition. I'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you, and, and I may not be the best guy to ask that question of because I've, I've been through two divorces, so I didn't do so good back then. <laughs> um, well, you should you should know everything, man. <laughs> you think? Huh? I did good the last time, so I'm good now. But the first two weren't so good. Um, but uh, it, it, like a marriage, a partnership, as you guys both know, is difficult. And I think sometimes there's a healthy dose of luck uh, involved there. Um, I'll give you one thing. It's kind of personal, um, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. There's... There's a way in my mind that I was taught that you treat people and there's 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 a way that you handle yourself. And some of that comes from me, my upbringing. I, I went to a, a Lutheran school as a kid, so I have religion in my life and it's not something I, you know, I, I, I try to preach or anything. But the point of this point is that Ken has that as well. And so it him and I align very well. And I didn't know that going in. I just he just seemed like. 
as I recall, there were seven people at Calsaway that had a, a part of that, and he was one of the th- the top three. But he was the guy that that I connected with the best. So as this whole process has evolved, we've learned that we're both not going to, um, you know, try to say something to make a sale, or or we just want to be so honest about what we try to do, and and. And I didn't know that. It, there, it's, it was dumb luck. It was a, uh, the initial uh, impression of who Ken was was solid. He had something we could offer, which was his social media skills. We had something we could offer, which was a part of the company. And it just worked out. It's so crazy how a, a partnership is in business is so much like a marriage. I mean, people could laugh, but... I mean, we spend more time with each other than we do with our our real family. And if you have the same life values and maybe you're on the same path, I mean, it helps out so much that, you know, we do have a lot of the same life values and we both have kids that are around the same age. So we align our business to to do the same thing. We both need to be off for certain things. Um, and we don't want to work weekends because it's so important to be with our our sons and daughters and be with our wives and uh, just there's there's more to life than just work. I mean, it's such a you know it's so important because that's what funds everything. But it's really crazy just how alike they really are. And if you treat it that way, I think you would probably have more success because you the communication, as you both know, has to be like on point. And there's probably a lot of partnerships that could have worked, but. Maybe they didn't because one isn't communicating as well as they should be. Um, and it's just like a marriage or a relationship. If it's going to be good, that, that communication has to be there. Uh, I think that's absolute. I, and it may be a text. It may be a, an email. It may be a phone call. It doesn't necessarily have to be a face-to-face type of thing. But I think a lot of people lose sight of to your point, and it doesn't resonate with everybody, but it resonates with me, you have to have that downtime. And I, I, I love to work. I got no problem. Work is not a bad word to me. I, I, I don't like to watch TV. It's a waste of time. I, I, I just want to be productive. But you get to a point where you have to delineate your time, and it's very critical. When the pool industry was going just 100 miles an hour, uh, and I was selling pools like crazy, uh, and, and I'd come out of a superintendent position, and everybody said, you'll never make it as a sales guy to start with. Well, now, you know, the gauntlet's been been, been tossed here. <laughs> then they told me I had to work nights and weekends. Well, no, my kid was, he was young. I'm not working nights and weekends. You'll never make it. Well, I was a top sales guy, uh, and I, I worked hard, I, but yeah. but. I, I had to separate that time, and a lot of people will disagree with that. They say, no, to be successful, you just got to keep going. I, I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. But I think if you have another discussion with them, you know, 20, 30 years later, the discussion would be much different because money gets you things, but it can't buy time. You can't go back and get those years with your kid back or your wife Maybe a divorce happened because you spent way too many hours at the office or when you're home, just because you're home doesn't mean you're home. You know, it's like, hey, I asked you like three questions and you're just like in your own world. Like, Hmm. you know, are you here? You might as well not be, you know. So definitely, definitely understand what you're saying there. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Bet I don't regret a minute I spent, you know, away from work that was spent with family. Hmm. Not one. Cool. We'll kind of jump into what you guys do now. You know, what what does Pure Water Industries provide today? You know, can you share with us some of the details on the, on the custom trailer and, you know, what reverse osmosis is exactly? So, again, we've had a lot of evolution from the first trailer to the, to the ones we're currently building. But at, at the end of the day, you know, reverse osmosis is just it's, – it's an amazing – it's an amazing opportunity to clean up bad water, and it's been around for decades. Um, it's definitely a product that that has its value. You can couple it with things. For instance, our trailers not only use the reverse osmosis system, but they also use UV light, so we really make some, some really pure water coming back. The The initial trailers had, had no physical contact, and in fact, it was funny. We used to drive around, um, and there's a there's a a rain cap on top of the exhaust and we would drive up to the trailer. And as we were driving up, we would say flap up. And if the flap was up, we knew the generator was still running and the trailer wasn't done. 
And then we'd get all bummed out, and we'd go do something else, and then we'd come back a little bit later and flap up, and uh, flap still up. <laughs> so one night we get a call about 1030. Customer says, your, your generator didn't shut down. It's still running. So we drive out, and we physically shut it off. So that evolves into a text process that says, I get a text when something goes wrong, and I can send another text to, a, to either shut the trailer off or restart it. Okay, and it might say that we don't have enough water coming to the system or the ORP is too high. Uh, again, this, the, the reverse osmosis hates chlorine, so we track it with ORP. Well, that evolved into what we have now, you know, fast forward, uh, a touch screen inside the trailer that we can control everything with, but we can also control that remotely. So our phones will do it, our tablets will do it, our desktops will do it. Uh, any way we can get access to that thing, we can fully control it. So that's completely evolved on how this thing goes. Um, and there's been a lot of other little nuances in there, but I, I guess the point is, is what we did is we took a proven technology, reverse osmosis, we adapted it to our industry, uh, and then we just keep improving it to try to make it more uh, accessible to others and, and easier to operate. How long did you go actually you know, without having some type of technology in place or how long did you chase after those trailers for? Probably a good two, three years. Yeah. It was a very slow burn. <laughs> <laughs> and we just didn't know. Yeah. So what made you implement technology into it? How did that come about? Well, a lot of it came about from getting late night calls to shut something down. Or or maybe uh, I think one night – we had a, a a leak coming out from inside of the trailer, and you're going to have those. You know, I mean, this is this is a machine that's bouncing down the road, and you don't always know what's happening in the back of that trailer. And you may be there for an hour or two, and nothing has happened, and then all of a sudden something wiggles itself loose, vibrates itself loose. So we needed to have those those things put into place so that we could stay home and control it. So there are, but there are sensors all around, around it that tell you those things or how does how do you get alerts? There are there are, sen- there are sensors inside the system that'll that track everything. They, they we can see in real time exactly what that trailer's doing and what the water quality coming through is. It, not all of it. You can't check calcium for example. We can track TDS, we can track ORP. We can see what our flow rates are. So one of the guys that has uh, one of our service providers in Texas uh, actually put a sensor in the bottom of his trailer uh, uh, for flood alert if mm-hmm. he actually gets a leak. The funny thing is, is directly above that sensor, he has a drip, and it constantly sends him an alert that he's flooding, and he just ignores it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so for anybody that might not know, what exactly are the problems with the swimming pool water that this process would be need for? What what would be wrong with my pool that I would need to call a reverse osmosis company to come out and make it more safe and not waste the water or be so wasteful? Because you do put a little bit um, of you know regular water back into it because of the waste. But can you explain what what that is exactly? So what what RO does is RO wants to take out basically minerals, and we'll get calls and people will say our pool's green. Can you come on out? And I say. I, I can, but it's not going to be for the trailer. That's a chemical reaction, right? That's something we need to control chemically. So uh, reverse osmosis is going to remove the solids. The things such predominantly, it's going to take out salt if you've oversalted your pool. Or let's say you're, let's say you're not a salt pool. Let's say um, you're, a, uh, you're a, like, a, like a fitness facility and you're injecting liquid chlorine. And all of a sudden your salt levels are screaming high, but the rest of your water is good. Well, you're either draining and refilling to remove that salt or, or you're calling us. Salts are really good when they get out. Uh, I've been told that, that saltwater pools get corrosive somewhere around five or 6,000 parts per million. Nobody's ever told me exactly what the number is. So I don't know where that is, but at five or 6,000 parts per million salt, I'm starting to get worried. Calcium, you know, the, there's a lot of states with calcium issues. You guys have it. San Diego has it. Texas has it. Florida has it. The, a lot of the southern states have that. Um, it's, it's a biggie. So that's, that, that's kind of what we started it with. Uh, but calcium will come out. We learned it would take out cyanuric. We've seen, we've seen pools. You've all seen them with the purple staining, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen that condition and, uh, we've purified those pools. The purple goes away. Okay. Um, 
we got called on a property, uh, one of our service providers up in Northern California, they found out there was arsenic in some water. Can you remove that? Yes, we can. How about lead? Yes, we can. How about copper? Yes, we can. So uh, it's RO that's doing it. It's not us. Okay. Like I said, we took a proven technology and we adapted it to our industry. So any hardness issues you have, um, or even phosphates, you know, those kinds of things, reverse osmosis takes out. But we're not there to clean up a algae pool. Right. And this is so cool because you're able to obviously conserve that water, but it's the – you're taking the the pool water that is existing in that swimming pool and you're actually purifying it and making it, you know, the, the best water it can possibly be. So you could drain the whole entire thing and put water from the tap back into the pool, but it's still not going to be right where you want it. Am I correct? Yeah, the water quality that we can provide, it gets I, – I, I don't like to be sales pitchy, but it, I, guess, I guess if I allow myself for a minute to do that, we provide a better quality of water than you can get with a drain and a refill. Sure. And we're retaining about 85%. We can't say it. I'm glad you asked that because I don't want anybody to ever think that we're retaining that whole entire pool. We just can't do it. Yeah. Well, I think that makes more sense that, you know, you are taking that waste out, you know what I mean? So that, you know, 15% needs to be backfilled with, you know, you know, more cleaner water than the waste, right? A, fre a, a fresh water backup. Yeah. Even though that that's going to be a, a, a lesser quality water than what we're really bringing back. Obviously, we still have to address that, but we can't take everything out. You can't take all the calcium out. You know that, you know, um, it's, it's important. I'll give you an example. You, um, you see some of the guys that do the tile cleaning. And if they're not removing not only the product they're using, the abrasive that they're using to clean the tile, but the calcium that's coming off, it's going right back in that swimming pool. And you just you temporarily took it away. It's going to redeposit. So we love following those guys because now they've given us really pretty garbage water, potentially, and we get to pull more stuff out. So a, a customer gets a really good quality swimming pool. It, you can feel the difference. And what kind of feedback have you gotten from, you know, homeowners that because I mean, so you have a trailer as well, right? So I you do. guys manufacture like build these trailers up from scratch and then you actually have one as well that you actually use. I do. I do. And and I, we had a guy that pulled our trailer uh, in the course of the 10 years we've been doing this. I ran my trailer myself for probably the first 3 or 4 years. Uh, hired a couple guys uh, that ran them for about five years, and then I took over again on my own in June, and um, and it's and and that's been a really that's been a lot of fun actually. I I resisted it in the beginning, but I've embraced it and I'm having a good time with it. Um, but yeah, so we are operating we are operating our own, and then we're building these for these other guys. We've got uh, we've got them in four states. We've got them in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas. Uh, we just, as of this week, sold one to Oklahoma, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, water quality, I'll, I'll tell you a quick funny story. My wife and I were in the spa one night, and um, we're sitting there, and she says, uh, hey, honey, something's wrong with the pool. And I said, oh, okay, what's wrong with the pool? And she goes, the water feels really funny. It's kind of slippery. And it was the first time I purified it. And she goes, wait a minute. She goes, is this what the trailer does? And I go, yeah, honey, that's what the trailer does. And she was blown away because oh, she wow. she wasn't even – she just thought something was wrong with our water. Like, oh, do we got an algae bloom? What's what's a slippery feeling? She never she was blown away. Wow. That's that cool. is really cool. And that's just because it was – because that's a salt pool, you know, so it was just much more smooth and you're not – so your skin wouldn't be as dry even when you get out. I had removed – I still had the salt in there, which, you know, kind of give you a false sense of soft water feeling. But all the – not all, but the calcium was so much lower than what we had ever had before, and the balance was so cool. And it, it just was a – it was a marked difference versus what we'd ever felt in a swimming pool before. And we've got that comment from customers. I've got a customer that the day I pull out, they book me three months in advance. They never want to swim in water like they had before. I think to further the point of what Bruce just talked about and something that was the main reason why we started this venture back here in Arizona is our water's hard here, very hard. Yeah. 
Um, and I know that all over the country it, it varies in what it is, but I've measured it coming out of our tap here in Phoenix area anywhere from 400 to 500 or 600 parts per million. Mm -hmm. So a drain and refill to me is not only a waste of water, but you're putting in moderately hard water back in your swimming pool to start. So I have on numerous occasions <laughs> drank the water that's coming out of our trailer, which is the filtered pool water to prove the point that – it's just good as the Dasani water that we have right here, you know, that's going back in the pool. And, you know, I, I hear what Bruce is saying when it talks about, you know, not trying to be too salesy, but I think that there's a huge visual in that. Um, we're going to be redoing some videos that we've done eight years ago because things have changed a lot. But I think there's a huge visual in the fact that the hose that's going back into the pool, that's your purified pool water you can actually drink. I think that showcases the fact that this is a much better water quality. The fact that, you know, not just in residential, but in commercial swimming pools. I mean, I've become a pool snob. I'll be honest. I don't like swimming in commercial pools. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're cloudy. They're slimy. They're nasty. They're salty. And there's just so Smell. much stuff. Yeah. I mean, and there's, and, and, and I recently swam in a pool here in Phoenix over the summer that I talked to Bruce about that and uh, at a high quality resort. And I was blown away at just how horrific the water was. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, this is a superior product. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah. The, the water quality that is going back into a pool is much better. And once you swim in a pool that has been processed with this type of water, and what Bruce just talked about, like having people call us back, they want us back in three months or six months or, you know, whatever. I mean, it just depends upon what everybody's motive is on that. You know, we usually recommend every two years of having the service done. But I'll tell you right now, when you swim in it, it feels phenomenal. In a year, a year and a half, you're going to start to feel that change in that water quality. And it's like, hey, I want them back. And there's a lot of truth in that. And and it's not just the water quality, but, you know, calcium destroys swimming pools. Right. And equipment. And that's one of the things that we've really harnessed on for the educational part of our business because one of the things that Bruce and I feel very passionate about is not just our product but being able to educate people on why you need this service and why it's so important to prevent your hardness in your pool from getting out of control because it's going to cost a lot of money to remove it and it's going to cost a lot of money to make changes. Thank you. So what – how could pool service and repair companies and builders, how can we pretty much have a better relationship with, you know, companies like yourselves or the service like reverse osmosis? Because what I'm trying to say is when we had Brothers Pool Service, we ran into a lot of situations where in the beginning we weren't really sure what was going on with the water chemistry or we couldn't find, you know, a clean out where we could actually, you know, drain the water into. There's a lot of different things that we would run into and it would be nice that, you know, we had a contact where it was like these this is our RO contact. So when we run into this situation, you know, until, you know, we can buy our own truck, like these are the guys that we go to and they'll go in and test the water and say okay, this is off and that's why it's cloudy and this is why this is happening and this is why it's not reacting to the chemicals you're putting in the pool. And, you know, you have that discussion with the homeowner, but we would think that if you're having that talk with the customer about what they need to do, which is probably using your services, that, you know, it's the best man for the job. We couldn't figure it out, but we're doing what you pay us to do, which is being the eyes and ears and letting you know that there is a problem. We know you want to enjoy your pool. You're protecting your investment because you hired us to clean it and maintain it and do all these different things. Um, do you have any relationships worked out with you know other servicemen in your area? And how does that how does that work? Because I'm sure a lot of people would like to know. Um, how, you know, how they should, you know, use your services, even if they can't buy a truck. I, I won't speak for all the guys, but I can tell you my experience in my area. And the challenge that we've had with the pool techs are that they're very protective of their accounts. And if they feel that you're going to have any other impact than doing what you're there to do, they're hesitant to have you in that backyard. Okay, so I've had, um, when we had employees, 
we were very specific. If the homeowner comes out and says, uh, hey, we're really happy you're here. We've been looking forward to having this done. Uh, by the way, my filter, can you look at my filter? We, we, we drilled into the guys, and I, and I do it myself now that I'm back in the truck, that you always ask if there's a pool tech first. Okay, because that pool tech is that's his job. That's not your job. You can't be that's not it's not your yard. You're a guest for that pool guy's yard. So once we got past it with the guys that that really gave us a chance and looked at it that way, we get a lot of referrals from a handful of really good pool techs because they they do get it. And there's one there's one uh, company in particular in San Diego that was a very um, slow burn, I guess, in accepting this. And I know you guys had Greg Garrett on a little while ago, and the office manager is a big fan of what Greg does, and, and he, he just really absorbs everything. So he was extremely hesitant um, in what we said we could do. But once we started to show and prove to him that, that you know, what we were doing was working – and that it did follow suit with everything, all the information that he was getting, like from Greg with water quality, that that company became one of our biggest supporters. And to this day, they still give us a lot of referrals. And they're one of the biggest in San Diego. Very cool. I think that's a really good approach, especially if you use it as an educational piece where you don't just come in and you're just bashing a company. But it's like, hey, you know, believe me, you're not the first. I want to help educate you on what – you probably should be looking for when you're doing this. And that way, maybe you'll make them better moving forward. You know what I mean? And explain to them those things. Because sometimes, you know, maybe they just don't know or they didn't remember, you know, a, a meeting that we have. But, you know, we all got to do our part in trying to make everybody the best they can be. Because a lot of people need to take this stuff a lot more serious. Mm -hmm. And we've had that conversation, right? I mean, we all know that this is kind of a, a fragmented and unregulated industry, and it needs to be more professional. And I think that, that uh, that's just a huge point right there because so many guys have just come into this because they already had a pickup truck, and they don't know what they're doing. They know how to sweep a pool maybe, but they're throwing tabs in without knowing what's going on. They're not properly testing water. I hate strips. I, I'm sure they have a place, but I don't have a place for them. We titrate everything. We we use two forms to check that water because we have to be accurate on what we have. We run a Myronel meter, uh, and with that Myronel meter, we will check TDS, salt, pH, and ORP, and everything else gets titrated with a with a Taylor Technologies kit. And I will never use strips because I just can't have – I can't be trying to compare a color to have an you accurate You want to be result. 100% accurate. Yeah. I have to be. And that was really cool in even watching your guys' videos was that, you know, the water gets tested, you know, beforehand, and you could see it change, you know, even hours later where the TDS was dropping off and, the uh, you know, cyanuric acid, as you guys said, is starting to fall off. And all these, you could actually see it changing and you could actually show the homeowner, like, this is where you were and this is where it's at now. So it's kind of... You know, it just is what it is. And like you said, with a, something like a tailored kit, you know, it's it's difficult with the strips because, you know, to be honest, we did use them quite a bit, but we were running into issues where they were pretty sensitive. So if it rained, um, you know, or it wasn't, you know, the cap wasn't on tight enough, um, you know, air and moisture and different things get in there. So it's going to give you a little bit of a false reading. And for what we do, a little bit of a false reading is kind of, you know, night and day. You know, being a hundred, five hundred off of something is a uh, is a huge difference for what we do. It goes from yeah. your pool's perfect to needs to be drained now. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I don't want to jump too much in the, that side yet. But um, before before we get into the professional side of it, can you? I want to hear really. Can you explain? So from where the hose goes into the pool, back in the trailer, how the system actually works, what it goes through to to get that water pure. Yeah, and what maybe a customer would expect. You know, somebody that doesn't know, I've actually physically not been at a site, but what does somebody expect when your truck pulls up? I mean, how big is this thing? How long is it going to take? What are we talking here? So the, the, there's, there's actually three different versions of trailers we can build, and, and they'll produce, obviously, different uh, amounts of water a day. There's a 20,000-gallon, a 30,000-gallon, and a 40,000-gallon a day. We've got a 20,000 in Texas. 
We've got uh, 30,000 in California and Arizona, and the remainder are 40,000 gallons. So, and I, and I operate a 40,000 gallon. So what that means is I can process 40,000 gallons of drinking water in a 24 hour period. The customer that signs up with us gets an email that kind of gives a little uh, rundown of what they can expect when we get there. I like to park at the curb and not in the driveway so that I, they can come and go like their normal activities. We're, we're not trying to interrupt somebody's day. We're trying to just, you know, provide a, a quality service for them that, that takes away the hassle of draining and refilling and doesn't doesn't impede anything that they would normally be doing in the course of a day. There's a total of four hoses on our trucks. There's a there's an inch and a half suction line that we'll take to the pool. We'll put it on one end of the swimming pool, and then there's another inch and a half line that we're going to take back. That's going to have that purified water going back, and that we'll typically put on the opposing end of the pool. Then there's two small garden hoses that we'll use to take the brine away, um, and that usually goes to a sewer cleanout. Although we have been approved to go to storm drain because we've neutralized everything and it's just salty water which is really important, especially, you know, uh, San Diego's tough, LA's tough. Uh, that was an important hurdle to cross. And then we have another garden hose that provides the, the makeup water. So on average, we're going to have about six gallons a minute of brine, and we're going to take and control everything in the trailer, how much brine is going down the sewer cleanout, which, which if you want to kind of argue it, becomes uh, kind of a, I mean, it's going to go back and get processed. So you're kind of conserving that when we can do that as opposed to dump it down the drain at least it's it's going somewhere to to be dealt with um it, but we control the balance in the trailer as well so that you do not lose water elevation in the pool we're not dropping and exposing a, the plaster finish so the trailer runs on its own the, the most of the customers aren't home when we get there those that are we'll we'll show them around a little bit and show them what's happening but we'll always tell them Hey, it's going to run as long as it takes to get to the number that we determine it has to set off, shut off at, excuse me, to get to, we guarantee calcium at 200 or lower. That's our guarantee. So if it runs 10 hours and achieves that, that's cool. If it runs 12, that's cool. Whatever it takes, this is our guarantee. This is how long we're going to let it run. Don't worry about it. Um, if it runs longer than we expect it to, it just hasn't done the job yet. And it'll shut itself down and go to sleep. We'll get a text and we'll see you in the morning. So what is it? So from the hose into the pool into the trailer, what do, what process does it go through when it's in the trailer? There's actually a couple of passes of of things it has to go through. So initially, it hits a bag filter, and that bag filter pulls out things that that are just suspended that can be caught. They're not small particulate type stuff, and that just makes the the membranes not have to work quite so hard. Uh, there's also a UV light that it's going to pass through. Uh, there's an injection tank inside that trailer that we inject an, an anti-chlorine uh, product, and we also have an anti-scalant to try to protect the membranes. The membranes are expensive, so we, we try very hard to protect those. And then the last the last process is going through the, the membranes themselves. So uh, we've seen it in the past. In fact, when we visited Ken with CalsaWay many years ago, they had a pump that they would put in the swimming pool, and that was one of the very first things we decided we didn't want. We didn't we didn't want to pump in the pool. We didn't want power at the pool. So our pump is in the back of the trailer. It's kind of like a little helper pump. It's a two-and-a-half horsepower stay-right pump that draws the water from the swimming pool, and it feeds it into a 15-horsepower RO pump, and that's where the high pressure comes from. It's about 200 PSI, and that's what squeezes that water and, and gets the impurities out of it. Nice. It does, it, does it go through a sand filter or anything like that? You don't have that, right? Early on, we had one, and we just determined it it really didn't have any value. We already had the bag filter, and it was just like a secondary um, filter. Long story short, and in all honesty, we weren't sure what Calsway was going to do to us when we built our own trailer, so we changed it three ways to protect ourselves, and so a sand filter was part sure. of it. <laughs> it's probably a good call. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. <laughs> um, Worked out in the end. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, so what is it, what is probably the most crucial thing in having one of these trucks? I mean, in, in terms of, um, maintenance on the vehicle, cause hearing all of this, it sounds like you got to be really good about just kind of, you know, either lubricating things or making sure you're cleaning off the uh, particle bag that the water's being filtered through. Uh, you have the UV system, which has a light 
right? So I'm sure that needs to be replaced every so often. What, you know, is there quite a bit you have to do after each, each time? It's funny because I don't know if it's funny. Um, we, I don't like crap. I don't like I, it to me. I would, when I was a kid, if I was going to go buy a bicycle, I would pick the bicycle that I felt was the best quality. And if it took me a little longer to save up for it, then that's what I would do until I got the best quality bicycle. We took that same philosophy on building these trailers. There, there's no weak links in this thing. We don't buy the cheapest trailer. We don't buy the cheapest generator. We don't buy the cheapest reverse osmosis system. Everything has been designed to function and to keep functioning. Because if you can't work, you're not making any money. So the the, the answer to that is, is that there's very little to do. There's so many things that are over-engineered for when we train a guy or if I run my own trailer on how to run these things, there's a built-in safeguard there. So in other words, if they pushed it a little harder than I tell them, nothing's going to explode because we've already taken that into consideration. Our injection rates are slightly higher than what they really need to be to protect the membranes. Uh, I recommend an oil change every other month on the generator. The generator people tell you every 500 hours, that's pretty close to every other month, depending on how much you're running. Uh, membranes, we went 9 million gallons before plugging our first set of membranes. We bought another set of membranes after that. We went to work. We would have them cleaned because you can have them cleaned sometimes. They put them in a bag in a preservative, and that will last up to a year. So I typically will swap my membranes once a year. Uh, I don't need to, but because that preservative is going to expire, I have to do that. I'm running about somewhere between 5 and 6 million gallons a year through my trailer currently. So, And I'm not seeing – there's a delta pressure change on the inlet and the outlet side of the, of the RO membrane that will tell you when it's getting dirty. And I don't usually see much of a change in that year. Sure. So, one, who are these trailers built for or, you know – Anybody that's listening to this, why is this a good kind of addition to their company? And what can somebody expect in terms of training on one of these trailers? Because I know you probably got to go through some week-long training where you actually look at every, you know, sort of piece of it so you know how to run it. It's funny. Got some funny smirks. You guys can't see that. but <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because just, I, I mean, I'm intimidated by this room, okay? I don't know what's going on in here and and all that, and that's kind of how our trailers are. When you first see them, they look real scary, but they're not. And we require a week of training with us before you can actually drag your trailer home. Most guys get it by the by the second day because they're really pretty simple to operate once you've had that time on there. We've had guys that go from they have a pool in, uh, pool company, and they're looking at it as just an adjunct to, to, to either – give a better quality to their customers. Like you said earlier, you're my go-to guy until I can buy my own trailer. I would say the majority of the guys are our existing pool service guys. Um, the smirk came because we got a call one time from a guy who was an ATM repairman and he wanted a trailer and we just <laughs> went, okay, dude, you know, whatever. Um, I, I don't know how you're going to do this. You have no industry contacts. You have no background you fix cash machines in the middle of the night. And he's our busiest guy. That guy works seven days a week. He's done the biggest pool that anybody, including ourselves, has processed. 780,000 gallon California Lutheran swimming pool. He did it by himself. Oh, wow. With, a, with one 40,000 gallon trailer. Now, I did 430,000 gallons on a YMCA pool in San Diego before Christmas. And I partnered up with one of the other service providers in our area to get it done quicker. I guess I could have been greedy and sat there for, you know, a, a week or two, whatever it would have taken. He did 780,000 gallons by himself. Wow. <laughs> so these bigger wow. trailers, is it just kind of the equipment times two? I mean, what's the difference between the smallest and the largest? The the generator sizes in output changes, but the footprint doesn't much. Um, the injection portion of it stays the same. The trailer size stays the same. It's just the amount of the membranes and how fast you can process the water. Okay. And how open are you guys? Say, you know, we bought a trailer, we're going through all of this, we're comfortable with it, but have like questions about anything. Are you pretty, how's the customer service is what I'm asking. <laughs> 
we're we're really good on the customer service part. As long that's, as you're not in the middle of a podcast. Yeah, recording. Ex- yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's one of the things that Bruce and I are extremely on top of. We we take a lot of pride in the fact that we build a, a great trailer. And we have other companies operating them all over the United States. But ultimately, if there's an issue, we'll help them. Um, This isn't one of those things where it's like, okay, you did your work. You know, you did your week of training and, you know, have a good time. We got our money. Yeah, Yeah. we got our money. We don't know. Absolutely not. It's, It's funny. Actually, in our contract, we say that we give them up to two years of support. Oh, wow. But we've, I mean, we've had some of our service providers that we've had for five or six years now that still call us and we support them. Because ultimately, we realize that we are the ones setting the precedence of what we are trying to do with everybody else. So we feel it's extremely important and and extremely vital to continue to provide that support for them. And I know Bruce can probably share some more stories about um, some things here on that, but we're passionate about that part because it's extremely important that when they go out that they have an operating trailer and they know what's going on at all times. So if there's ever a problem, we will help them and support them. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, one thing we discussed, I think our initial conversations that intrigued us pretty well was you guys have kind of an inline system for set up for commercial pools that you can build as well. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's, that's something we're really excited about. Actually, Ken had a, contact at a Marriott actually out here that we visited with about, oh, three and a half years ago, I guess now. And he showed a very real interest in what we did. And we came up with an agreement where uh, we would do a kind of a combined data collect where they could see what really happened on an inline and we could see if we could really do an inline because nobody done it before. So we, we partnered up with the Marriott and they naturally chose a place in Los Angeles, so that we could struggle through uh, Los Angeles County Health, which, as you guys know, is terrible. (laughs) And we got through, and it really wasn't that hard. And they had a few concerns. We had to be NSF rated. We were. We are. Um, They were blown away that we had uh, the UV light, you know, for killing that aspect of it, and then the RO for taking out what that does. They were super concerned that we would impact the flow rate on their system. So we had a sign off that we wouldn't. And so when we plumbed it, we plumbed it as such that their flow rates don't change when the system does come on. It sits there on the ready. And and in this application, the the Marriott has chosen a high TDS of 2,600 and a low TDS of 1,500. So the system sits there willing to go to work whenever the sensor reads 2,600, it turns itself on. And when it gets back down to 1,500, it turns itself off until it's time to go on again. It's worked phenomenally well. Uh, it's a three- to five-year uh, uh, agreement with the Marriott, and we're at about year three with the installation now. So we've had some really good data collect off of that. Oh, congratulations. Well, thank you. So when we first met in Long Beach, we were pretty blown away. I know it was me and Kyle at first, but, you know, we walked right up to the trailer, and you were just so – kind and inviting and were willing to show us, you know, the, the trailer and just, you know, what everything did exactly. And we couldn't believe how clean it was, to be honest. And we thought it was like, you know, brand spanking new. We we're like, you know, so how much does this thing cost? And you're like, well, this is actually my trailer. You, this is my kind of my working vehicle. We're like, you actually use this thing? And you're like, yeah. And we're like, we're just blown away at how clean it was. And then we, you know, got into a whole other discussion, which was just, being professional and looking the part and keeping a a clean vehicle and, you know, just having that presentation, you know, give that customer the ultimate experience because you got to believe in your product and you got to, you're not going to pay the bills and be successful if you're not being mindful of all those different things. So how important to both of you is just, you know, being professional in general it's it's always been important to me. I told you guys when I got out of high school, I, I took the easy route into construction, and the first path I took was a house painter. And I'm not real proud of that. 
But wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so did you did you do the painting part or did you do the preparation part? Because well, the preparation part, <laughs> they trick you into thinking that it's the easy stuff, and the preparation is the worst. Remember, Greg and I got paid like ten dollars an hour one time to like lay the paper and the tape, and they're like, "Oh yeah, this is the easy job." No, no, no. The paint spraying the paint is the easy job. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't look very hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. My yeah. son said once when he was very young and he had no idea what he was saying. He goes, "Dad, you never know what you never know," and that's where you guys were, right? You oh. thought you were doing the easy part, and you learned no, that wasn't even true. No, they told us we were doing the easy part. <laughs> Realized very quickly that it was not. <laughs> We've been there many times. You become a real good salesman when you need to be. Oh yeah, we got sold into a newspaper route. Oh, oh it's easy, man. Easy money. <laughs> Just drive around throwing papers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I learned from that that there's a lot of painters out here, and and most of them are covered in paint. So I would go down to the Goodwill, and I would buy polo shirts, or at the time, because I told you I'm old, uh, the old um, the eyes out of Lacoste with the little alligator, mm -hmm. and I would wear those to work because, to me, I just presented a little bit better. And I've, and I've always done that, and no matter what I did. It just seemed like if you can have that appearance thing. Uh, when you're in somebody's home, it's a job, okay, on, on our end. But it's their home, and you have to be respectful of that. You can't, you know, kick the dog or, or slam the gate. I mean, I, I it just bugs me if somebody opens a gate and it has a self-closing feature and it slams. It's just disrespectful to me. Especially at 6 o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> yeah. I won't lie. I'm still in bed. Drag the uh, net across their wall. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, it, these are small things, but they go a long way, and a lot of guys just don't get it. I, I, I I don't think it's pro I don't think it's proper for me to show up in flip flops and board shorts and a tank top. I just I don't think it presents well. I don't think it, it represents our industry well, and I think our industry has a bad image problem that we're just a bunch of I, I mean a, a, a bunch of stoners driving around in pickup trucks, cleaning swimming pools, waiting for the the you know the surf to come up type of thing. <laughs> but I mean, even the name I feel like hearing the name pool boy, pool guy. I always hated that, especially when family would come into town or, you know, anybody got wind of, you know, what we were doing with our business. They'd be like, oh, yeah, you're the you're you're a pool guy, right? You and your brother. I'm like, no. I'm like, it's much more than that. I'm like, this is a professional company that, you know, we have employees. We have an office, a warehouse. This is just like, you know, the HVAC industry or the plumbing industry or anything else like that. It's taken very seriously. And just get into – just get technical with it to explain to them that not a pool boy, not a pool guy, you know what I mean? We're pool service industry professionals. That's what it is. And some people like that and some people maybe don't want to take it as serious, but – you know, if you want to really raise the bar and make more money and take it to the next level and give people that, you know, experience, the only way you're going to do that is by acting the part, right? I, I totally agree with that. And and if you want to call me a pool boy, I, I guess I maybe I can't change your mind on that. But I'm going to take it more serious than I think it has been in the past. And I think that having a clean shirt and and being logoed up and not – you know, dropping the, the F-bomb all the time or just having uh, – I uh, again, I go back to my kid. I told him early on, hey, pal, listen, we all know the bad words. Pick a different one, you know, and I'm not going to say <laughs> – That's a good one. <laughs> I'm not going to say I don't say them. Okay, yeah. come on. That's that's a lie. But if I'm in the backyard and something's not going right, I'm not having a temper tantrum with a bunch of foul language. Okay, I, I'm a professional. I need to figure out what the problem is. I need to address it. I'll go back in the truck and deal with my own, you know, feelings later. Speaking of that, we had a, a situation where one of our guys, he's he's definitely not very uh he definitely likes the cuss words. <clears throat> he doesn't so, have a filter. No. <laughs> So he was out doing this repair job, and they didn't want to fix it right, which we usually fix things right. But this is one of my buddy's houses, and he doesn't have a lot of money. So I was like, "Hey, we got to do it this way this time. You know, it's not going to be it's not going to be the right way fully, and we got to get it to work so they can use the pool and blah blah blah." And so he's like out there, and, <laughs> and he's flip, screaming, flipping out, like saying, "You know, you cheap asses! Why do you got to do it this way?" Blah blah blah. And he's like. So I get a call from my from my buddy, and he's like, "Hey man, he's like, I don't know what your guys doing, but my wife's there, and she's hearing all these cuss words, and he's calling us these cheap asses and all this stuff, and <laughs> we can hear it, 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh man, dude. And I mean, luckily it was my buddy, and I could like, you know, wind that one down a little bit. But I was like, man, you know, we had a really big discussion with our team about, hey, like this is not. <laughs> This is not how we want brothers represented, you know. And that's such an embarrassing <laughs> conversation to have to have with somebody. Oh, you know what I mean? Because it, like, in all honesty, that's what it was. But that's not how it should be approached. They know it. You know what I mean? And just being his friend and all that stuff. But it just. Yeah. It was he cool. was, I mean, our guy was very, like, apologetic. And, like, you know, he, he understood it was not the right place. But it was just funny because it was my buddy. And it was like, you know, you're lucky this happened, like, at this house, man. Because if it was some other random house, I don't know what would have happened. But he was, it was awesome. And he's like, your guy's calling us this and that. And he's like, I'm gonna, about to kick him off my property. And <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm about to kick him off your property. So, you know. No. But the consequences are so much greater now. I mean, they can go on the Better Business Bureau, Yelp, Google, Bing, wherever. Uh, Even now, the big one is next door, you know, because you can't do anything about it. They go on there and say, whatever you do, don't let brothers in, you know, your backyard because, you know, they're cursing up a storm and this and that. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, if you you live, you know, uh, in that area and you have access to that next door as a personal account, you can defend yourself a little bit. But... You know, you have to be really mindful of all those things and let your team know, too, because if you do a really good job at making those things transparent, that, you know, what you do is, you know, a reflection of us and our company. And if you keep it up, there's not going to be any pools of service, not going to be any pools of repair or build or do RO, all these different things. You know, we have to act as one. We all have to be professional. And like you said, we we get it. We not, we're not gonna act like, act like we don't do it. And especially when you're around your team, you know, a bunch of pool guys, that foul language definitely gets dropped quite a bit. But you know, there's a there's a time and place for it. Where it is difficult. You shouldn't. You know, to be honest, it is difficult when it's really hot and you're having to do repairs. But you have to understand, you know, when you get to that moment, you know what's right and what's wrong, and that's what separates the good from the bad. You know, the ones that have discipline and they can endure you know, that kind of stuff and press on or the customer comes out and says, man, you all right. It's 110 out here. You know, I say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing good. Thanks for coming out. You know, I'm going to try and, you know, get this done so I can, you know, get on my way, but I appreciate you. You know, some people they'll roll their eyes and they'll, you know, uh, you know, like get it, get out of here. You know, I'm trying to do my thing. Well, you know, I think but- even like, remember the story about when that guy, when that bought the cleaner and then told us the cleaner didn't work. And you had to go in his backyard. Do you remember when he was like screaming and yelling at you? And oh yeah, he's gonna call the cops. Yeah, yeah. not not the cops guy. Oh. No, the other one. Remember that we put the <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> not that guy. Uh, that one's, that one's that? a good one too. Yeah. But uh, no, remember we bought he bought a, like a rebel and and a vac mate, and then like he said, it oh work, but, yeah, but he was like out there cursing at you and all this stuff, and you didn't. You didn't, you know, yeah. drop it. And I beat. recorded the whole entire thing. I had it on in my pocket, and you could just hear him the whole time. Like, he was just, he wanted me to snap. He was just like, whoa, like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to take it back, and we're going to refund you your money just like you asked. I, I apologize for the inconvenience. Yeah, well, you better, you know, just keep going on. I'm like, that's what we're going to do, just like you said. So I'm just going to get this out and be on my way. And there were so many times where it just, it got definitely got easier with time because you knew what people wanted. And you just, you know, so, like they say, you kill them with kindness. Because when you do that to people, they're, most people are not used to that. And they really feel terrible because they're like, dude, when I left, I'm sure that dude was like, dude, I feel like shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I seriously like gave that dude the hardest time. And – he probably did the right thing, and I just was too blinded by, you know, what what influences are in my life, which is my wife or my girlfriend or my kids or whatever's going on. But it's like, you know what? You just handle it and move on. There's so many situations like that that happen that we, we learn from it. You know what I mean? Where it was awareness to the products we're putting on your pool, letting you know what's going to happen. Yeah, this isn't. This isn't everything. It's not going to suck up the lemons. Told you to cut down that damn tree. You know what I mean? It's like, right. it just bumps into these lemons. It's a, really? What do you think it's going to, how is it going to filter a lemon or an orange? Like, it's just not possible, man. So yeah. the reason know, I brought it up is I just think that that, that, that story was really, you know, 
good for you being in the backyard and being, you know, tempted by this guy to blow up and holding your professionalism is, is very key. You know, that's you gotta, what you got to do. And there was just so many times because I did the initial bids for, for pool service that a lot of people were blown away. They're like, wow, it's nice to see somebody here with a company shirt. Like, swear to God, that's exactly what they said. Even having a polo or the T-shirt that just said Brothers Pool Service and all the contact information was on the back. And it was a good peace of mind letting them know that, you know, anybody, you know, fixing your pool or cleaning the pool, if they're not wearing one of these shirts, they're not with us. So I want you to know that. And that was always something really important that we stressed with our team because if we did a follow-up and they were, you know, they took that shirt off and put something else on, like, dude, you cannot do that. You can't do that. You know what I mean? Because we tell them this and we have to be transparent from customer to us, to our team. Um, so that professionalism is something that I don't think you'll ever – it's not something you're done with. It's just a continuous deal that will always be a little bit of a struggle, but you have to learn from you know mistakes and different things like that. I think we had to keep preaching it to our team too because you would do that you know, on the initial bids and it would be super professional. And then they get this pool guy in the backyard and it's like – no, yeah, I, I don't think he told me the truth. You know, we had to keep stressing that with our team. Like, you gotta, you gotta at least like, you know, look a certain way. And you know, we even got uniforms at one point, which is pain in the butt. But you know, that was just like a really important piece. Um, of yeah. them. and we always put that in the notes, right, Kyle? It always said, "Make a good first impression." <laughs> Some of the notes were, uh, yes, very detailed. <laughs> yeah, but that was one of them in the beginning. It was like, because go above and beyond. I mean, you're always going to do the job correctly or you should, but you know, the, that first month is critical because they're, they're watching you under the, the microscope and they're looking at everything you do. They're watching, you know, are you looking in the house? Are you, are you knocking stuff with a pole? Are you dumping the skimmer basket in their yard? Are you dumping it in their trash can? There's all these different things like do what the guide tells you to do. Exactly. Be mindful. Take your time. Don't look in windows. Don't. It's none of your business. What's going on there? Unless people, I mean, we've I been in. I think you want to look in the windows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did one time and I regretted it. Can't take that back. Yeah, I can't take that back. Oh. <laughs> um, but it does look suspicious. I mean, like you're going to steal something. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. I I think the professionalism thing starts from first contact. And it's interesting because <laughs> I remember when we first went our first meeting together, Bruce and I, I think I showed up in like khaki pants and dress shoes and a polo. He's like, whoa, dude, like, you know, <laughs> you might have taken this too far. But um, it, it really does. And even for us. It's it's and it, and it should be for everybody, but for us, it starts from that first contact. Whether it's somebody that contacts us via the web, if it's someone that contacts via the phone, it all starts there. Even though we we just it's 2019, we're actually celebrating our 10th year in business. Wow. There are still a lot of people that don't know about what we do. It's still a new service for a lot of people. So for us, it's even more important when it comes down to we have that first impression. But I'll tell you right now, when we're on the phone with someone or when we're, you know, sending an email, it, it's, it's all done in a certain way to make sure that that initial contact is on point. And it continues from there. Because when Bruce will pull up with our trailer, the trailer is clean. It's a high priced piece of equipment. We're offering a service that is that end product is a phenomenal end product. So from start to finish, we have to make sure that we're always on our game. And that's not something that we're just like, oh, hey, we got to do it this way. How to... It's just in our nature. Mm -hmm. It's just what we believe in and the thing that we have instilled upon each other that, you know, our customers are the most important thing. Yeah. Have we had challenges? Of course. We have stories just like you guys have stories. But at the end of the day, we are selling what we consider like the Rolls Royce of, of a service because we are providing that amazing end product for that water. So it starts from the way that we appear, you know, clean shaven, you know, uh, polo shirts on, making sure we're clean and so on and so forth. And just like you guys talked about, don't look in windows, don't do, you know, it, it all becomes that how can we make sure that our customer feels like they're a part of our family? Hmm. 
And that's how we look at what we do. Right. I always tell people, I'm going to treat that customer as if I would treat my wife or my parents or things like that because it's all about them. And we we know that their word of mouth on us, whether it's in social media or Yelp or all these other things, are just as vital. Mm -hmm. So it all begins there. And it's crazy how rare it kind of is because how many times have you been somewhere and somebody had a really good just uh, – sort of impact on you where you went to a restaurant or you went somewhere and you're like, man, like I, I can't remember the last time I got service that good. And it just makes you, you kind of look past some things. Maybe the food was like, just like every other place, but you know, the service you got there was just like out of this world. And it's crazy that if you just, anybody listening to this, that's having struggles with that. If you just focus on what you really should be doing, you just went above and beyond. I bet you that there'd be something special about what happens with that, um, that account. Like if you just said, you know what, before I get out of my truck, I'm going to make sure that I'm prepared. I have everything, you know, my, you know, I don't have any junk on my face or my shirt and I'm going to, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to say, I'm going to say my line. I'm going to have a big smile and I'm going to, you know, you just, you're thinking about all the steps you need to take because at the end of the day, like this is a business you need to have you need to have a profitable business and the only way to do that is by making sure that you are following every single step in order that you should and being sincere you know and there's a lot of people that are really good at it and they're they've they have a really successful business because of things like that more people that are bad at it <laughs> <laughs> but you know what no, here's kidding. something think about it you you have to go to the bank when you walk through the door at the bank, you have an expectation of how you're going to be treated, right? And that person may be having a bad day, but they're not out there cussing and swearing and throwing stuff and whatnot. I mean, why is our industry different? Why, why are, you know, the cleanliness thing, how can I pull up to a job site and say, man, I'm going to give you water you can drink out of this hose and my hose looks like it's been in swamp water. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can't have a filthy rig to produce a quality product. I just don't understand that whole mentality. But I but the the bar has been lowered so far in our industry where like you say a pool guy becomes kind of a bad word and it's our own darn fault because we've allowed that to happen. We haven't elevated ourselves so that the pool owner expects from us what they expect from the bank or the restaurant where you get the great service or most anything else you go to. You don't go to the grocery store and find somebody having a bad day stocking and they're throwing the orange juice all over, right? I mean, yeah. you behave pr accordingly in our industry, which it's part of the construction industry. And so obviously we go back to the bad words and all that kind of stuff. That's just that's just that industry. It's a little bit rough. It is, but everything can change. Nothing, Nothing is in concrete. Everything can change. If you want your company to be better, you're a one star and you just have the worst image, I don't care. You can flip it around. If it's something that you really want to do, you can do it. The only person stopping you is you. Really, at the end of the day, that's it. You know? Pretty simple. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to be – if everybody did everything they were supposed to, there wouldn't be much work out there. So – you know, you got to, you know, do the best you can with your business. But so you guys have also done an amazing job in making your company a message transparent through the website, social media. Um, you were even on the news, which was awesome. And just went and watched that video again where you were on the news. That was pretty sweet. Um, but we just love the flow of everything and how easy it is to follow through just the you know, all the content on there and the videos and all the different things you have going on. How is that, you know? marketing journey been well we appreciate the compliment first of all yeah. um it was always about becoming visible really from the start and bruce earlier in the show um talked about my social media experience and different things like that um really my experience in marketing took stage with digital quite a long time ago um and i really focused in on websites and search engine optimization because i believe that most professions in this day and age that everybody's looking for stuff online. I mean, whether it's your phone, whether it's on your computer, 
uh, people want to be able to find it fast. So I guess what you could say is I really kind of geek out and making sure that the websites are SEO friendly, that they're mobile friendly, everything that Google requires a website to be, that's the way I'll build it. Um, But it also goes down to making sure that you know, you really do a deep dive into what your business is doing as far as education and what people might be typing in to find your type of business and making sure that the content is written in a certain way. So that's really where we've focused a lot of our time is just making sure that we have a a good website with lots of information for the people that want that. But it's also easily navigatable, if that's a word, (laughs) Um, (laughs) that you can find what it is that you're looking for. But also the fact that Google will crawl in such a way that if people type in how to lower calcium hardness in a pool or how to lower TDS or how to lower CYA, things like that, that we will be visible. Um, We've also really looked into all the different avenues that we could make our business visible to touch every possible arena of what we do into water quality, um, diseases that you can do, cryptosporidium, all the other things that, you know, we haven't really talked about that RO can remove. Um, And making sure that when people land on our website, that might be their, what we just talked about, that might be their first impression of us, that it looks clean, you can find what you're looking for and so on and so forth. And really, I, I believe that 75% or more of our business initially really came from finding us on the web. Well, I found you on Google and didn't really know that this was out there, but this is really cool. And, you know, I want to give it a try. And then, of course, as you do more and more pools, that evolved into word of mouth. Uh, Yelp has done very good by us as far as uh, reviews go. Uh, word of mouth has been incredible as far as other people sharing this great experience Our it even goes down to our trailer. It's our moving billboard. Um, and Definitely. that's an opportunity for people when you're driving along to be like, hmm, what's that about? Never drain your pool again. You know, that, that's kind of that intriguing tagline that you need to get to people um, to give you a buzz. And then, of course, building the relationships with some of the pool guys in the different pool stores has been effective as well. But um, and, and really, that's where it kind of came down to yeah. is just having that presence and being visible. Yeah, and you guys have a good-looking brand, too. Like, you guys represent it very well, and that all ties into the way the truck looks and the website. Like, it all kind of, you know, makes sense. You know, it all jives together. Was that important from the beginning, making sure that the brand was on point? Um, absolutely. Or did it take I mean, time? It, took, it took time, and so – there was another name of our company 10 years ago, about three and a half years ago. We, I did mention to Bruce that I felt that because what we do really goes beyond just swimming pools. I don't know if we've really touched on it too much, and it's a story for another time, but some of our service providers are, are making pure water for breweries. Um, and some of them are working in the semiconductor industry with Honeywell to make pure water for them. So uh, really three and a half years ago, I think I brought it up to Bruce's attention that I said, you know, really – we had pool, the word pool in our name. And I'm like, I think we're limiting ourselves. And if we really want to get into this inline thing and start getting into, um, large hotel chains and different things like that, I, I, I said, I really feel like we needed a different name that really showcased ultimately what we do. So we changed our name and we came up with pure water industries. Um, I really liked the name cause it, it, it goes straight to the point of, well, pure water. Industry. Okay. Well now at least we know what you do. Uh, and it showcases the fact that we can use these trailers and or inline systems for more than just swimming pools. So building a brand, I think, is um, something that your messaging has to be on point. It has to be easily understandable for the most part for somebody to get it. Uh, and then that cleanliness of a logo and so on and so forth all needs to jive. And I, we felt that that happened with this this name, Pure Water Industries. Sure. And is that just an ongoing thing that you're just, you know, taking care of the website and, you know, you're you're the one that does all that, I'm assuming, on the day to day? I do. He always jokes because he's he's out and about and he'll call me and go like, well, so what are you doing on the back end of the website today? <laughs> and, um, mm-hmm. you know, but that's that's where I think the partnership works the best. I mean, we've we've talked about this. Bruce and I communicate on a regular basis. We talk about things that are going on. We talk about what can we do better. A lot of people will use the phrase, oh, I think we're doing a really good job. Well, I think we are, but is there something we could be doing better? So 
when it comes to the communication aspect of the website, we're always looking at minor changes that could happen and easier ways that somebody could fill out a form to make sure that maybe it asks every question. So at least we have a better impersonation of like, okay, this is what they need because now we have all these different services. So even like, I think a couple of months ago, I said to him, Hey, you know, let's have a drop down menu where it says I'm looking for mobile filtration for my home or mobile filtration for a business or inline whatever we could do. But yes, as far as me geeking out on a website, I'm constantly on the back end messing around with different keywords and changing around content, right? I, we blog weekly, um, always looking at different topics that we can talk about to help increase our rankings and so on and so forth. But I, I, I take that beyond just, it's not just San Diego. I'm not looking for us to just be visible in San Diego. We want to manufacture these trailers and we want to sell these inline systems for people all over the world. So it's really taking that a next step of right, not just localized so people can find us in Arizona or Florida or um, we're talking to a guy right now that's in Tennessee. So we might be infiltrating that market, too. So because primarily, you know, we've been in four markets. But like we said, we just hit Oklahoma. And now we're talking to a guy in Tennessee that's looking to take this into the Carolinas. So always looking to increase our digital footprint. Um. And that's something that I do on a regular basis. To... Very good. So Pure Water Industries is not anywhere on the truck when somebody buys one because it's not a franchise. They put all their logos and stuff on it. They do the wrap, right? That is correct. Um, when we first start talking about franchising, we, we mentioned this before that franchising laws are very intricate. And there is bullet points of what you can do as a franchise and what you can't do. And we felt like we wanted the easiest barrier of entry for people to purchase these trailers and start their own business. We have a cost associated with building a trailer for someone. You know, this is a service. If you want the big trailer, it costs X amount. And um, we kind of felt that by franchising, it probably would have been double that. And most people in this industry probably couldn't have fallen into that realm of being able to start up a business for three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand, or whatever it might be, just to get a trailer because they've got to follow all these rules and regulations of what a franchise is. So we felt that the easiest barrier of entry to get started in this was offering a service provider model. So really, what it comes down to is they contact us, we talk to them about what trailer size they want. And Bruce said, you know, we do the 20, 30, 40, we can custom build you anything you want. Um, we can go bigger than that. We've had one of our service providers that does a lot of these commercial properties that wants potentially a hundred thousand gallon per unit day. We can build that, but ultimately there's a cost associated with it. You pay us yeah. to build you a trailer. We're going to build you a phenomenal product from start to finish. Cause we've spent 10 years of doing this and and knowing what works best and 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 improving the technology as best to our ability and then we give it to you it's right. like you're buying a product none of this is off the shelf it's all custom made all the way down from the trailer to the generator to the ro system when it's done come out we'll train you bruce trains them on how to use the system i'll help them out with some marketing stuff to the as much as i can because again there's intricacies of that and franchising law. You can't charge, tell them they got to charge this or they don't have to use this. So they get a blanket trailer. Yeah. It's either white, black, or gray. They can logo it up how they want. It's their business to run. We do re make the recommendation that they put powered by the Puri pool process or something on there. Cause that's easily searchable. And it kind of puts us under this umbrella. We have 22 service providers right now all over the United States. So there is that family atmosphere that we try to incorporate but as far as that it's their business they run their own books there's no royalty payments to us it's that's that now the only other money that we would ask for them is when they want to build another trailer <laughs> and then we'll gladly do that for them but can i get a mini for room. the uh, above ground spas <laughs> <laughs> So, but that's how we've decided to run our business. And we feel that it runs very, very well because it allows them to, you know, run their business. And again, we're here for support for them. You know, a lot of them have asked us, you know, or they'll try to do some stuff and then they'll call us and be like, Hey, I try to do this flyer or try to do this mailer. And we're like, don't waste your money. You know, it's a 1% return on investment. It doesn't work well, but this is what we've found to do well. So we're always there to support them because we want them to be busy. Yeah. And we teach them these things that we've talked about in here about dressing nice and provide, you know, all these things that we're, and we'll, we'll support you with that. But ultimately it's their business to run. We have no say. And as soon as they take that trailer, it's theirs. Right. 
Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you guys so much for sharing your story and sharing the business. You know, we've, we've had a really good time with you guys in here. Um, can, what kind of advice do you think you would give to somebody just starting out in the pool industry? Um, you know, that needs a little bit motivation or positivity or, you know, how can we make this industry more attractive to somebody like just starting out? I, I personally think it comes down to just raise the bar personally, learn some things, get certified, uh, be professional, have a license, understand how to test water. Don't, don't fall into the, you know, I, I, I'm a tablet guy. I don't know why I'm a tablet guy, but I saw the other guy put tablets in a floater, so I'm that guy. Learn how to titrate your water. Learn. I, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that I hate the most in this industry is when I see somebody come back with a water report and it says uh, free chlorine, three, good. Uh, conditioner, 100, good. Okay, well, first of all, I don't think 100 conditioner is good. And I also know there's a relationship between conditioner and chlorine. And if your conditioner is at 100, your chlorine needs to be at a minimum of 8, right? We know that. But we've got companies out there, big companies, that are testing water and putting on that paperwork that with a 100 cyanuric number, your 3 chlorine is good and that's a recipe to fail. Well, if you're the pool guy that hasn't learned that relationship, you're going to have problems. So... Spend some time and learn your industry and treat it with pride and, 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 and become the most knowledgeable guy you possibly can. Don't just be a sheep. I, I, it's a, it's a, listen, it's been providing for my family for 20 plus years, and I love what I do. I enjoy this industry. I've met some really cool people. But I do get frustrated when you sometimes look back and you go, the, the level of quality of individual and workmanship is not what the customer expects. So help help yourself by getting yourself educated and, and treat this with pride and respect. It's a, it's a great place to be. That was really good. Thank you. And that's – we've talked about that before. Don't be easily influenced because I feel like this industry, most people can be influenced to – bad habits really easily, especially if you don't really know anything. But if you go and become a part of a, you know, a association or get CPO certified or whatever, you know, go to the source of information of what's in the books maybe and see what they have to say before, you know, somebody else is such a big influence on, on your life, you know, especially okay. if they're not very successful, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I've been doing this 20 years, 20 years, man. <laughs> I think I can get out of it sooner than that. <laughs> That's a nice 73 Datsun truck you have there. <laughs> I think one thing we really have started to believe since doing this is like, you know, find someone to train under that you that you believe does a good job and someone that, that can guide you along the way, you know, don't, it's very easy to, that's, I think why this business is so attractive is you can spend, you know, three to $5,000 and have your own business, but which is what I did. I mean, we did. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, if I had to do it, I mean, I had the nine months of training at the swimming pool warehouse, which definitely helped me, but you know, to do it the right way, I feel like if you work for somebody and you can find somebody that, cause I think there's a trade off where, you know, as a business owner, I would be willing to train somebody, you know, pretty well. If I, even if I knew they were starting their own business at some point, because that person to me is going to work hard for me for the year and a half or two years that you're under me. Right. And, you know, replace them and that sucks but you got to go through it but i mean at least that you know you 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 have a mutual understanding like hey i want to learn i want to do the best i can be be the best i can be and then at one point down the road i'm probably going to do my own thing but I, you know and have a mutual respect of you know obviously don't steal accounts and don't need that but you know to find somebody and learn under somebody that can teach you the right way and and then like you said go through the certifications and learn everything you can because it's much cheaper on somebody else's dime to be honest to get those certifications and get those you know trainings you know rather than pay for it yourself so if you can work for somebody and they'll get you trained and CPO certified and all these things. And you can kind of use that to your advantage as well and, and work your way up with the system. And then you'll be educated enough to do it on your own and bring, you'll bring a quality service to the industry. So, um, well, before we end the podcast, um, can you guys share with our listeners, you know, where they can find you online if they're interested in it? Sure. Our website's www.purewaterindustries.com. Um, we are on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we use 
social media somewhat. Um, it's not the general driver driver of our business. Um, it helps, you know, push things in a sense, but you can find us on social media as well. But typically the website's always going to be the best. Very good. Well, thank you guys so much for making the trip out here. Um, this was a great talk. We really appreciate it and love what you guys are doing and just really look forward to talking to you guys again. We really appreciate it, you guys. We're, st- we're stoked to be part of this. So thanks, thanks for spending the time with us. Thank, thank you. you as well. This is quite exciting and a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening. We know that your time is valuable and we appreciate you spending that with us. Also, if you guys missed episode 30, we discussed how we are now doing pool chasers full time. We're super excited for it, guys. It's a very big step as husbands and as fathers, but we truly believe in the message. We 100% believe in the pool chasers community. If you have any questions, please email us at poolchasers.info at gmail.com. Please take the time to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you have not checked out the Facebook group yet, please do so. It's awesome in there. Thank you guys so much for the support. We appreciate all of you. You so much. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.